Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the simulation of Type-C chopper in MATLAB. So let's get started. This is a circuit diagram of Type-C chopper. It is also referred to as two quadrant Type A chopper. So the reason is very simple. It operates in first and second quadrant. If you carefully observe the circuit diagram, it is basically a combination of Type A chopper and Type B chopper connected in parallel. So as a result, it is operating in both Type uh, first quadrant and second quadrant. So in case you have not watched the videos with respect to Type A and Type B, please do watch it. It will give you a clear understanding of operation and how to simulate them. So with respect to the output voltage, uh, it is always positive. Uh, uh, with respect to first and second quadrant so how do we justify that if you carefully observe if chopper 2 is conducting or free wheeling diode is conducting the voltage at this point is short circuited isn't it so it will be zero otherwise if ch1 is conducting or d2 is conducting when ch1 is conducting especially current is delivered in this particular direction consequently the voltage will be positive as a result we will be saying the voltage is always positive how do we say the current is either positive or current is either negative so when uh, especially when ch1 and free wheeling diode is conducting current is delivered from the source to the load and when uh, when will the free wheeling diode conduct whenever ch1 is off ch2 is also off and the energy stored in the inductor is dissipated in this direction consequently the current will be positive when ch2 or d2 is conducting power will be delivered from the load to the source due to the supply that is there he over here so based on that the current will be positive or negative one of the most important points to remember is ch1 and ch2 should not be triggered simultaneously in case you do that it will be short circuited at this point if this point is short circuited then the supply will become short circuited if you are practically implementing the circuit uh, and you trigger T ch1 and ch2 simultaneously your supply will get damaged so be very careful uh, if there is a fuse it will blow out with respect to the supply so be very careful with respect to it so let's go into our matlab and uh, start our simulation over there all right here we are now we'll click on simulink library browser and search for power give block which is especially uh, needed for the simulation to take place without this block simulation will not take place so be very careful with respect to it we need a voltage measurement block and a current measurement block add both of them we will be requiring a dc voltage source so search for dc voltage and uh, you will be getting it right at the bottom choose the ones that are there in black that is used for power electronic applications the ones that are there in blue they are used for various purposes like digital signal processing and a lot of other applications so once that is done uh, we will be requiring a mosfet so search for mosfet and uh, you'll be getting it right at the bottom so add that block over here and we will be requiring a pulse generator block in order to trigger it search for pulse so you'll be getting it right at the top uh, at this point so add that block once that is also added we will be requiring a diode so search for diode you'll be getting it right at the bottom choose the one that is there in black uh, once this is added we will be requiring a series RLC branch so which will be later converted to an inductor as our load and we will be uh, requiring uh, a scope so search for scope uh, and add that block because it's necessary to see how the waveform looks like and uh, we will be requiring a logical operator as well so I'll tell you why logical operator is necessary later on we will be converting this uh, logical operator to not get according to our requirement so we have added all the blocks according to our requirement so we will be uh, starting off with our simulation by placing them in appropriate position so that we can get started uh, with respect to our circuit connections so this will be placed at the load end and power give block is generally placed at the top so uh, first up rotate this and uh, double click on it and disable the measurement port with respect to this and uh, with respect to diode as well disable the measurement port and once that is done uh, rotate this in the uh, upward direction so uh, MOSFET should be the source should be facing in the downward direction according to its circuit connection so be very careful with respect to it and diode should be in the upward direction so uh, once this is done we will be connecting them in this particular fashion according to our circuit diagram so uh, we'll be enclosing the circuit and this should be connected at this point and and we will be connecting this uh, at this point be very careful sometimes if you miss this connection uh, then uh, there are chances that you will go wrong with respect to the output so what happens is usually if you have a current source here a current measurement block directly people will connect it here and they will miss the connection at this point so be very careful with respect to that so over here I'll be connecting the current measurement block and I'll be conducting uh, I'll be using an inductor over here whose value is set to be default one million uh, Henry so once that is done 
i'll be connecting it uh, over here we will be requiring another voltage source at the load end as well uh, so we'll be connecting it in this particular fashion and uh, enclose the circuit uh, and close it in this particular fashion so once this is done uh, we will be requiring a not gate uh, so uh, choose the option of not and click on ok and give it to the pulse generator block so the reason why we are using not gate is to ensure that both the switches does not conduct simultaneously if they do so the supply will be short circuited so uh, we'll be giving uh, the tapping from the gate terminals for one switch and from the not gate will be giving at this point so if this is conducting this will definitely not conduct because we are using a not gate and if this is connecting and this will definitely not connect so based on that logic we'll be doing that so once that is done we'll be measuring the voltage uh, at this point and uh, at this point uh, at the output and connect it to the scope and we'll be connecting the ammeter as well to the scope in case you would like to see how uh, the pulses are generated and how it is associated with respect to our circuit just so enlarge this a little bit and you will be getting an option if you place the cursor at that point so directly connect it at this point so that we can see how the pulse are generated as well so now uh, we will be double clicking on the source and we'll set the voltage to be equal to 24 volt you can change and try it for different values this one will be chosen to be equal to 12 volt uh, at least half of the supply uh, voltage you can try it for different values as well um, just to demonstrate and give you an easier understanding I'm doing this way uh, click on pulse generator choose the amplitude to be equal to 10 volt so that we can clearly see what the pulses are and how how much they are uh, for visibility purpose we'll be increasing the amplitude that's it and our uh, period time period is 0 0.02 seconds pulse width is 50 because uh, we want 50 percent of the time to be on 50 percent of the time to be off the reason is very simple when 50 percent it is on and once uh, after 50 percent it is off consequently this will be turned on for the rest of the 50 percent that is the reason and logic behind it so once this is done set the simulation to one second and click on run so these are static loads as a result will not have huge simulation time so double click on the scope in order to see how the waveform looks like so we can categorically separate them by using this particular function uh, so that we can clearly see them individually so we can zoom the waveform uh, at this portion as well so if you carefully observe this is the voltage waveform it is not going less than zero that is the maximum uh, the minimum value is uh, zero and uh, the maximum value is always in the positive direction the voltage is always in the positive direction however if you see current increases current decreases and it goes to negative as well it goes to positive negative positive negative based on the switching action uh, free willing action takes place so it increases and decreases consequently and uh, so these are the pulses that are generated so amplitude is given to be equal to 10 volt you can further increase it if you want to see the amplitude properly uh, gate pulses properly i guess this is sufficient in order to see so as we can conclude voltage is always positive current can be either negative or positive this type of circuit is called as type c chopper in case you have any questions with respect to simulation feel free to reach out if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video please do keep supporting thank you